All right, hey everybody, back for another week, switching gears, so I'm doing soccer now. So for a lot of people that have been following, soccer is actually one of my favorite sports. I'm always uh, at the Philadelphia Union games, so I had the pleasure um, when I first started watching the Union in 2015, um, so I became a huge fan, like I got the pleasure to work on the field and all as well. Uh, so it looks like uh, my guest is about to join, so... I'm going to I'm going to connect with him now and then I'll do a quick intro of how I met him and all. One second. All right. See Josh about to add you. Hey Josh, what's up man? Oh, what's Hi. up man? Long time. I know, man. It's been like all, literally almost a year almost because a year, when yeah. I was on uh, f Facebook all the memories were popping up of when I was I young. Know. With with uh, Mike and San Antonio and all, yeah. Oh, that's that's crazy. Uh, that seems like a while ago. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> it's wild. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna do like an intro of how I first met you and all. So me and okay. Josh, I've known him for almost four years now, which is crazy. Time time flies. I met him yes. his uh, rookie year with the Philadelphia Union. He's now a defender with uh, San Antonio FC. So my guest today is Joshua Yaro. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's that was four, maybe maybe a little bit before four years ago, because this is my fifth season. Yeah, um, yeah, times. Yeah, times flying, man. It's crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> crazy. All right, so I'm gonna do like the basic questions first, just to get to know you, and then we'll dive right into soccer. So I know you grew up in Ghana, um, but what age did you move to Santa Barbara at? Um, so I moved uh, to Santa Barbara at age fifteen. I came age fifteen. To... Okay. Yeah, I went to Kate School, um, which is a prep school in, in Carpinteria. It's a, it's a town really close to Santa Barbara. Um, and so I came as a sophomore, did my sophomore, junior, and senior year at Kate. Um, and then, as you probably know, uh, moved on from there to Georgetown. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what age did you start playing uh, soccer at? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> the earliest I can remember, it's probably six. Um, that's when I, I actually did it and started enjoying it. Um, but I most likely it was before that. But I, at age six, I actually did it and liked it, and and um, it was something that I wasn't. I did for fun all the time. Gotcha. Okay. And then when you moved over to the states at the age of fifteen, um, like was it around age fifteen and sixteen you started getting a lot of notice from like the D one schools? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you know anything about my high school, it's a really small school. It's only 275 kids. And so oh, wow. a high school that's small doesn't get um, a lot of attention from, from colleges. But I was fortunate that the year that I was there, my first year, my sophomore year, we had a really good team um, that was actually nationally ranked. Um, we had a lot of, a lot of good players. And, and as a result, we got a lot of college, college coaches coming to watch us play. I was also fortunate that I could play for a club. Um, during during the the winter season or during the uh, one of the seasons, and so I I was fortunate that I played for Santa Barbara Soccer Club, and we had a lot of showcases. So every Thanksgiving, actually, we had a college showcase in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And so all the college coaches or a lot of college coaches were there, and I got seen as a result. Um, but it's funny how I ended up at Georgetown because um, Georgetown wasn't one of the schools that was uh, monitoring me and 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 recruiting me from the start. Um, and it's a story that I gladly uh, will be happy to share with you if you want. Um, oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like that was like how my other question was like, like how'd you wind up there? Because like of course, um, I used to play baseball, and then like when I was in high school, I used to help out my high school basketball team. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I kind of know about the recruiting process. So like I'm actually curious to see like how the recruiting yeah. process is for soccer. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I had I had all the schools um, that wanted me, you know, sending messages, emails, and all that stuff. Um, mostly, I mean, I think your sophomore year, up until your junior year, they cannot really get in touch with you. So they have to talk through your parents, your guardian, whatever it is. Um, but then Georgetown was a unique one because I went to, my after my sophomore year, the summer after my sophomore year, I went to um, a camp hosted by Yale. Oh, Okay. Um, and one of the coaches there, it's a really small, I think it's N N A I A. Um, I think I heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a small division, um, but the coach and I really developed, um, good chemistry and we really liked each other. And he was a you know, really fun guy to be around really nice person. Um, good coach. 
Um, and so after the camp, you know, he said, I know you're not going to go to school for a division um, as small as ours, um, but, you know, you've really impressed me. And if you need help along, you know, the line or if you need any advice or anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out. And so I, I totally forgot about that. And it turns out he went to college with my Georgetown soccer coach. And so my Georgetown soccer coach calls him up and says, I need a center back uh, for this year. And he said, oh, wow, actually, I have a guy in mind. You know, so he told my Georgetown coach all about me and how he met me and the time we had and all that good stuff. And so my Georgetown coach said, okay, well, maybe he's someone worth looking at because that particular coach that recommended me was someone that he really trusted. Um, and so it also turns out that the, the trainer that was at Cape my sophomore year when I first got there, left and worked at Georgetown. Oh, wow. Okay. And so my Georgetown coach knew about that. So he went and he asked uh, the trainer, you know, do you know this person? Is he someone that's going to fit in here? Is he a, a good person? Is he someone you're going to have on your team? And so, again, um, the trainer, you know, gave, gave a good recommendation. And so as a result, my Georgetown coach reached out and that's how I started talking to Georgetown. But even when I did, it wasn't a place that I thought I was going to end up at. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was still looking at schools on the West Coast because I want to stay there. And if you've listened to any of my interviews uh, about that, I always say I want to stay in a much warmer place. And the West Coast gave me that. And uh, but funny how things work out. In the end, I ended up going to Georgetown, and it's a decision that one of the best decisions I've ever made. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like that's like probably a huge uh, culture shock for you too, because like yeah. the West Coast is so different than the East Coast, and then mm -hmm. you have our crazy winters which are not yeah. fun at all um yeah. yeah so what was it like like trying to settle in at georgetown like of course you were like on like all freshman team you won a lot of awards and accomplishments so like wh what was it like with the whole four years at the soccer program and uh and just trying to adjust at, at, at georgetown and being on the east coast yeah i mean it was great um when i when i got to georgetown you know my coach and i had a talk and i i it was I had always wanted to play professionally and I knew I wasn't going to be in college for the whole four seasons. Um, right. So I told my coach about that and he was on board and he said, you know, I'll do anything I can to help you out, I'll, you know, help you achieve your goals and dreams. And um, so it was a perfect match in that regard. Um, and I remember my first reaction when I got to George Towns and the campus. I was like, oh my God, this place is amazing. You know, the campus <laughs> yeah. itself, the history behind it, the architecture and everything was amazing. And, and I loved it from the start. Um, academically, really challenging, but again, I had a good support system at Georgetown that um, always offered the help that I needed, always uh, made sure that I had everything that I needed to be comfortable. Um, and then as a team, I mean, the three seasons that I spent at Georgetown was, it was amazing. Um, the program had really good players, um, and we, together, you know, we made some good, really good memories. Um, and again, I mean, uh, you know, just like you ask, a lot of people always ask, you know, you got a lot of recognition in college. Um, and to me, that's a testament to how good of a team we had because you're, you're always as good as, your, you know, your team. Uh, you can be the best player in college and play on a team that's not good. Um, it's going to be hard to get recognition. Um, but when you play and everyone around you is doing well, um, it attracts a lot of attention to the program. And as a result, you know, your talent and your hard work can get seen. And I was fortunate to get that um, through my teammates and through the program that um, the Georgetown coaching staff had built. Okay. Um, so what would you say was your favorite moment uh, being a Georgetown Hoya in, in, in the soccer program? Uh, my favorite moment was when we won, uh, God, all the years I've blended together. Uh, I think it was 2015. Uh, okay. We won, we won Final both, season. Yeah, we won both the regular season. And... Um, the conference tournament and i think that was the first time that the um the first time josh had, had ever won the conference tournament and so oh really uh, wow yeah, that was a special moment yeah oh that, well that, yeah that, that day oh, and okay. it's crazy because we actually played um um we played against creighton um and it was at home i mean i, mean, I still remember exactly you know how it went <laughs> and how crazy it was and all that uh, but yeah no, that definitely would be um, the best, the best moment for me in my college career. Oh, okay. With, with the team. Yeah. So I know you're a real humble guy, of course, and uh, you don't like to brag, but I always like to ask this question uh, mm -hmm. to athletes because, like, I kind of like to get a feel yeah. of like when they knew that they were gonna be ready for the next level. So, like, like what what year uh, or 
it could have been your final season. Like, what what year did you know that you were ready for the MLS draft? Um, I mean, like I said, you know, going into college, that was that's always something that I had in the back of my mind. Um, and and I knew my sophomore year. I think in all my years at Georgetown, that was probably the best year for me. Oh, okay. Um, and so I had a good, you know, freshman year is so kind of, you know, learning and growing. And mm -hmm. sophomore year, I felt like I had since figured out a little bit better and um as a result healthy i think like i said had a really good season and in my opinion was my best season um and then again if you know a little bit about my background and story you, i actually got an offer to play um in mls but i turned it down that year um because i thought one more year of growth and one more year of um just having a college experience was going to could be good for me and so yeah. I ended up staying another year and then of course the following year I left um, and so I wouldn't put a timeline on it but I think my sophomore year was when I I really started to uh, to think you know that it was time to prepare okay. and to um, to leave whenever the opportunity came gotcha okay cool yes so you knew like before you started school and then your sophomore year, it seemed like you got like a really good comfort of uh, knowing that you were going yeah. to uh, go pro. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to touch up on the MLS. Like what was it like to go through the draft combine? I know you, you had to fill out a lot of questionnaires, do drills and stuff, but how, how cool was that experience? And like, what was that like to be like a top, like a top three pick already heading, heading in, like, like just going through all that. Yeah, it's a humbling experience um, because obviously when I was going through the draft, there was a lot of hype, a lot of um, expectations, and and um, you know looking back now, it turned out to be sometimes a little bit stressful because as you know you're coming out of college, you're, you're still trying to figure things out, and mm -hmm. it's nice to get you know the hype and the recognition and all that, um, but it also uh, it puts a little bit of pressure on you, and. Uh, but I did try as much as I could to enjoy it uh, because I knew it was once in a lifetime. Um, I, yeah. Um, going from the combine into the draft and the draft day, how things were done and everything, you know, especially, you know, having all the union fans actually at the draft or some of the union fans at the draft was yeah. pretty amazing. Um, and you get to meet the fans right there and everyone's so excited to meet you. And, and you know, as a result, I actually have, um, you know, formed some relationship with those fans that were there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it was just a cool experience, an experience that I look back now and I'm always going to be grateful for um, and I'm always going to be thankful for having such a great opportunity. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then what was really cool about it was that, like, basically the uh, draft was really close to Georgetown because it was in it was. Baltimore, Maryland. So that must have been, mm -hmm. like, ironic and also amazing too that yeah. you were second overall pick on draft day and all <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was it was good because after the combine we were supposed to fly straight to um, baltimore but i was able oh. to get an exception to go back to georgetown because i had everything still at georgetown yeah um, and like you said you know it's 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 really close and i was fortunate that way because i had you know even some of my friends and some of my professors even you know show up to the draft and it was it was amazing. It was a pretty cool experience, and it worked out really well in terms of um, its location. Um, and, yeah, no, I mean, one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my life, hands down. It's, you know, just waiting to find out where, where you're going to go, um, where, what the next step is going to be for you. I mean, not knowing and the anticipation, um, it's, it was great. It was really great. Yeah. Um, and then did you have a lot of your family members there with you? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I had um, – I have a host family in, in the States, uh, you know, when I went to Kate um, mm -hmm. and, and they were, oh, they were there, you know, to support me. Um, there were a lot of uh, people that, you know, I call family in the U S that, that were there to, to help me out and support me throughout the day. And it was, it was amazing, you know, sharing that moment with people that I've gotten to know people that, you know, I've gotten to be a part of their family. Yeah. Oh yeah. That must've been cool. Um, now, my last question with the draft, and then we'll jump into MLS. Um, mm -hmm. So, did you know that you were going to be top two? Like, what were your nerves? Or were you just nerves? Like, did you know that you were going to go to Philly? Or, like, what was that like? And then, like, did uh, you already know um, where you were going to be picked? Like, what were your nerves like? Um, that I didn't know. Um, I honestly, and I don't think I've ever said this to anyone, but I honestly thought I was going to go number one. 
because I had teams already um, that didn't have the number one pick, but were trying to trade for the number one pick. And so uh, if there were some teams that were called up, I would have just totally started walking because that was the, the goal that they were going to trade and get number one pick. Yeah. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, and so when that didn't happen, I was like, okay, let's wait for it. How is this going to go? And I think Colorado Rapids had a number two pick. And when I had met with them, they said, if you fall to number two, we'll pick you. And then all of a sudden, there's an announcement that they've traded your pick. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting there like, crap, okay, this is like all oh, the ones that I thought were going to you know, pick me are not in that scenario, are not, don't have the pick now, so what's going to happen? And then, of course, you know, Philly came up, and that was totally unexpected. I did not. Oh, really? Know, wow, yeah. okay. I, I, I had no idea. I had zero idea. That I was, <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that, was a, that was a surprise. Um, and, yeah, like I said, all the teams that I thought were going to pick me in the draft um, or that I had a sense or had told me, Philly wasn't one of them. Wow, okay, yes. Yeah. So, so that was like a really nice uh, surprise there, yeah. And yeah. then also – also, on top of that, you had your teammate, uh, Keegan, yeah. also drafted with, with with you, too. So, it was, like, really nice to have somebody go to Philly with you, which yeah, was like, great. It was, it was crazy because I'm there. You know, once you get drafted, everyone is trying to interview. You're going through all these things. And uh, and so, I'm giving an interview, and then I look. I heard that they had announced the other people. I couldn't obviously hear the name. I look, and it's Keegan coming with a Philly scarf. <laughs> Holy crap, he's like, ah, I get drafted. Yeah. <laughs> Great, I guess we're going to be teammates again. And then while we're there giving our interviews, we see Fabian Hebers, who is someone that we played against. Oh, him. okay, yeah, yeah. Because Fabian went to Creighton, and so mm-hmm. we're like, this is a reunion, like a biggest reunion right here. <laughs> uh, but it was amazing. It was amazing because going into that, you know, an environment like that and having, you know, for me, two guys that I knew, I knew Keegan really well. Um, Fabian, not so much, but someone that I had contact with, and we, you know, we played against each other. It was it was nice to have those two guys um, going into an environment where I didn't really know much about, and it was mm-hmm. going to be a challenge. But it also, it also helps when you when you have friends around, you know, people that you know and can relate to, and um, can just feel comfortable around. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Now, I mean, like, I'm not saying this because you're one of my good uh, friends in the uh, sports industry, but I feel like that that draft was. A really good draft and like from 2017 on like there really hasn't been a draft class that's like really made a big impact because like I haven't really seen any of the first rounders really uh take off or even like make make any of the starting 11s you know yeah, yeah no it's uh it, it was a good it was a good draft it was, yeah um, because look at the top 10 um, picks for that year um and guys that are still doing really well again we talked I talked about Keegan Rosenberry uh he's a guy that's still going strong he's doing really well um you know, Jack Harrison, um, a lot of the guys from draft, draft class that are still playing MLS and, mm-hmm. and doing really well. Um, so, yeah, it was a good class. Um, again, like, I, that's one thing that I probably have never told him, but I'm I'm always grateful that I got the opportunity to play with him. Uh, yeah. And in Philly because it helped me a lot with my transition. And like as I mentioned, it's always nice to have someone you know uh, just to be comfortable around. Yep. I see that Keegan's on and oh, he on. and he did a little like emoji thing. Keegan, we uh, miss you in Philly, man. And uh thank you for checking in, Keegs. <laughs> oh, I did not I didn't even see him there. Yeah, yeah. I saw that he did like a comment on there, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so it was uh nothing but positiveness. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's uh, jump into Philly. So like of course, um so what was it like to play in front of the fans? So like I know this is um that this is like probably one of the craziest fan bases that you will will probably ever play in front of or even play against as a visitor. So what was yeah. it like to play in front of the Philly fans? Um, it's a cool experience because I remember when I got drafted and I met some of the fans. They said, you know, Philly fans are passionate and it's um and it's uh you know they they're really passionate. They're always there for the team. Um, and I found it out my first year. You know. It didn't matter if the team was doing well, if the team wasn't doing well, the fans always showed up. Um, mm-hmm. And Philly fans, are, as you know, are not shy to let you know how, what they think. Right, and, yeah. Uh, they always keep it real, which is tough for players sometimes. But uh, as a player, you need that. You know, you need that feedback to know how you're doing individually and as a team. Um, and so uh, it's it's great. I mean, you look at, and not because I played for Philly, but, 
you look at in terms of facilities, in terms of the stadium, it's one of the best in the league. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the environment, the fans, and everything. It's 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 one of the best you get in the league. And and again, uh, I, was, I was really fortunate to have that experience and to have that opportunity to uh, to be part of the field organization. Yeah, that's uh one thing about Philly fans. So like even like. Even, like, the guys that um, that I still keep in touch with, they used to play for the union or, like, uh, or like other sports. Like, I always tell them that, like, Philly, Philly will be with you as long as you play hard and all. And, like, even Keegan saw last year, like, like when he came back in May, like, we gave him a standing ovation and, 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 and yeah. I cheered for him. So, like, yeah, I mean, like, Philly will always be uh, fans of you as long as you play hard and all. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I mean, we do have that rep where where we boo and get on the uh, players and all, but like we always appreciate hard hard work. So like the fans always appreciated you too when you were out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 definitely true. Um, like I said, I mean that's how you know supporting a team should be. Um, you know, there are some fans that root for some players. Um, it doesn't matter what team they go to, um, and. Like I say, it's 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 always it's always good um, to see the Philly fans and and how passionate mm-hmm. they are about the team. Because some some clubs, when the team is not doing well, fans don't show up to games. Yeah. Um, and Philly fans don't don't do that. They'll show up to the game. They might not like how you know how about the team is doing. They'll show up. <laughs> right. And how they feel. I mean that's and that's how it should be. You know, it's it's uh, because at the end of the day, the team always even when the team is not doing well, the team always always needs the fans. Um, mm-hmm kind of get them going again and then to get them back up and Philly fans do that really well. Yeah. Um, all right. So we touched on the Philly fan base. So I just wanted to ask you, um, so what was it like uh, your rookie year with like the nerves and all trying to adjust to the game? Maybe it starts to get a little slower for you, meaning, meaning that you're starting to pick up on things. So what was that like your first year? Um, first year, I mean, it took, uh, I'm trying to figure out how many games it took before I actually made my debut. Um, and on top of that, making my debut in Seattle was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an atmosphere that it's really, t- really tough to play in. And I remember um, before the game, uh, actually before we traveled, um, Jim told me, you know, just do your best. Um, we brought you here for a reason. Um, and so I went in knowing, hey, you know, this is what I've always dreamed of and I'm going to go out there and play. And just be myself. Of course, you get on you. It's it's uh, just there are some nervy moments, and uh, you get a little bit nervous because it's your debut, and it's an environment that's tough. A lot of crowds. Oh yeah. The biggest crowd I've ever played in front of. Um, but at the end of the day, I knew that I was surrounded by guys that were gonna help me out, um, and guys that have have had had a lot of experience um, in those situations, and so I, I just relied on my my ability as a player. Um, and my trust in my teammates and, and the coaching staff um, to go out and just play and enjoy it. Um, and I think I did that as best as I could. Unfortunately, that you know that game, I I remember we lost two one. Um, but in terms of debuts, uh, I was happy with it. Um, it didn't also help that we actually got a red card. I think in the first half. So we played. Oh uh, yeah. Game. And I was like, out of all the you know the days, like this is this is this was not there. <laughs> idea for someone to get a red card but it ended up being a good uh, good experience and again um, there are a few things in life that you always remember uh, that's going to be one of those times oh yeah for sure um and then uh, i hate to bring up a, a bad time but i just wanted to ask um so your final year obviously didn't go like as as planned or any yeah. any that you hoped for what was yeah. that like to struggle with uh the shoulder and just trying to get back out there um i mean it's I do realize, um, you know, things in life happen, um, and unfortunately, I, I've had I dealt with a fresh of my of, of injuries, uh, which has you know it's always not easy to deal with. Um, but again, you got to learn to deal with it. Our line of work it comes with it, um, and injuries can set you back in a lot of ways, um, and it did with my time in you know my time in Philly. Um, I feel like. Uh, like if I if I was able to stay healthy, you know my trajectory with Philly would have been would have been different. But again, that's part of life. It happens. Right, I just right. gotta move on, learn from it. There are a lot of uh, valuable experiences that I got from Philly. A lot of lessons that I 
I learned how you know during my time with Philly um, and a lot of experiences that I got with them, and that's only going to help me move forward and move me get you know keep pushing myself to where I want to go. Um, it's a bad time in my life, but again, those are only lessons, and um, it's it's in the past. Um, injuries happen. It is what it is. Uh, I just got to keep pushing and keep improving every day to get to where I need to be and I want to be. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so next, next I have for you. Um, so was it a really tough decision? To, I, I mean, like obviously, like you had you had the injuries and you were really comfortable playing here in Philly. Was it a tough decision to leave Philly and then to start your new journey with uh, San Antonio FC? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, it it got to a point where it was, I think, um, the best the best way of progressing my career was not in Philly, um, and that was clear between you know the coaching staff and and me, and something that I just I just couldn't sit there and you know and 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 watch my career go a certain way. I had to I had right, to right. seek a change, and uh, change is not all that bad if you think about it, and. San Antonio gave me a place and has and continues to give me a place to develop um, and and to 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 get the minutes and the games that I need mm-hmm. as a as a professional. Um, and so, you know, it's Philly again. That's why I got drafted by Philly, and it's a place that I actually did really love and um, a place that I, you know feel as a city. I, I I miss I miss the city every day, um, and I made a lot of good friends, a lot of connections there. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, it was time for me to move on. Yeah, my place and my career um, progression it was was somewhere else and not in Philly, and that's that became clear um, for for me and for everyone in the management. Okay, um, so I mean, of course, I was out there. Um, it seemed like like the season was like up and down, um, but mm-hmm. when I was watching you, because like of course uh, my uh, good good pal. Michael LaHood uh, played on the team last year. So I got to watch a lot of the games. Like, of course, I watched you, and then I and then I pay attention to Mike, like, like out there. Like, you looked fantastic, um, just okay. just moving around, playing defense, and then you even scored a goal last year, too, which uh, was really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so how was that year like, just to go out there every day as a starter, never have to worry about – you know, like Jack, Jack Elliott, or anything, where where you were the number one guy back back there. What was yeah, that I mean, as a as a professional, you know, you always you always want to have the opportunity. And I wouldn't say you know everything was handed to me because when I talked to the coach uh, last year, he said, I, "I can promise you one thing, which is you're gonna have a fair competition," and that's all I ever wanted. Because I know myself that if I if I if I have that, and if I'm gonna be able to compete for a spot, I can do it. And that's all I ever needed. And so, having that opportunity in San Antonio, um, and as you know, as a professional, once you get a spot and you play and you play well, well, until you start not playing well or until you got injured, you're gonna play. That's 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 the reality of our sport. It doesn't matter, um, you know. And so, I was able, um, you know, to show well in preseason, to show well in the first few games, and I became reliable for the team. And, and so the team could trust me. And as a result, I was able to keep my form up and to, to play well every game. And um, I was able to keep my spot that way. But the one thing that I, I again, I always appreciate about San Antonio and the coaching staff here is they gave me an opportunity to, to compete for a spot. And mm-hmm. that's all I needed. Okay. Um, so, of course, last year you had a really bad injury, which I always uh, kept in touch with you about. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you tore your... ACL. Um, so what is so like of course I never had an injury like 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 that, but what's the um what is that feeling like on the field? Like do you hear like a pop or is it just um what is that like? No, no, I mean I again I I mean I, I, I told my MCL. Um MCL, sorry, yes. yeah. That, fortunately that's that, that was my worry when the injury happened because no one knew why it was and i was waiting to get back because we played in vegas and i was waiting to get back to san antonio because it was it was late and we're flying back the next day so i couldn't really do much and i was waiting to get back to san antonio to see our team doctors here um and so i was really worried what if it's you know acl you know it's uh but fortunately i mean it's it still sucked but it was it was an mco um and 
um, the recovery from that was 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 not too bad. Um, okay. you know, I, was able, I was actually able to start back up with the team um, in preseason, which was nice. Um, yeah. But no, it was one of it was it was a weird injury because I I had a ball in my own eighteen. The next thing I know, someone is like tackling me in my own eighteen yard box. I've never had that happen to me ever. Um, and. <laughs> Um, and because some, you know, strikers, some strikers are aggressive, but not, not like that. So because, not like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, it happened. I felt like I could go back into the game actually, you know, and I tried, but at the end of the day, um, it was just not the right thing to do to, you know, try to play through it. So I set out and, you know, came back to San Antonio and found out that it was a torn MCO. Wow. Yeah. Um, but, so I didn't pay attention uh, to the beginning of USL, um, but uh, were you back, or 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 was there still like a timetable for you to eventually play, minus like all like the pandemic and all? But like, was there like a certain timetable where they were going to get you back into the eighteen? Oh yeah, I would have. Um, I mean, the only game that I missed was the first game uh, of the season. Um, and after that, I would have been able to, to, to get back into the squad and play. Um, oh, wow. Okay, cool. It's just unfortunate with, with everything going on. Um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I would have been able to, to start playing again. Um, again, it, it always helps. And even with a lot of injuries that I've had, I've always been fortunate to work with, you know, really top doctors and, and, and trainers and physios or whatever, you know. Um, to to get me back on the field, and here you know in San Antonio, we're really fortunate that we have the same you know access to the same doctors that the the Spurs do, and so mm-hmm. you, you know it doesn't get bad in there, and and you get taken care of. Um, but yeah, I was I would have been back by now, so just just sitting and waiting. I haven't played in an official game since October fifth when I when I got my injury, and so I'm really eager to get back and you know. Play yeah, I can't. And, I can't oh, imagine man. what what you're feeling and all just to get back in the eagerness. So I'm hoping this all uh, calms down, God God willing, and then we're able to get back to everyday life and seeing yes. you back yeah. out there. Yeah, for for yeah, absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Um. So I I'd like to ask this. Uh. So, um. I watched Michael eat. So like whenever um I went to go visit him in Miami, Cincinnati, and San Antonio, yeah. he goes carb overload and like just. Watching him eat all that pasta and chicken parm, like I feel like that I would fall asleep on the bench or on the field with, yeah. <laughs> with all them carbs. So, what's what's your game day meal like before a game? Um, I actually, I mean, I I personally think you know two days before the game, um, it's really important what you eat leading up to the, to game day. Um, and a lot, some people want to eat a lot during you know the day of the game, and I I usually don't eat too much before games. Um, yeah. I wanna, be light, stay light. Just everyone is different in in how they approach uh, games and how they prepare for games. And one thing doesn't work for everyone. And so, um, you know, the day of the games, I usually, if there are games on uh, on TV, I watch those. You know, EPL games, Bundesliga, watch all that. Um, go out for a walk. You know, try to stay loose. Try and you know keep active. Um, and then you know, a few hours before I eat breakfast, you know. A little bit of lunch and then a, a pre-game meal, uh, which is usually not much. Uh, but again, you you want to have some carbs because you're going to be <laughs> running and bend a lot of yeah. Things. And so uh, that's that's always needed. Uh, but I'm someone that I, I don't like to eat a ton um, on on days just because I want to feel light and and be ready to go when when game time comes. Yeah, like I feel like a probably like a Gatorade or like some like chicken and rice would have been good but but it was like really cool to see like what uh michael eats and stuff and like he doesn't yeah. even gain a pound because he's just a workout machine so it was like really right. cool i mean and it was also hot in san antonio too so i was like shocked that he was able to eat eat all that and then just play great but again he's like he's like one of the best vets so he's yeah, probably so, eating like, like that yeah i mean he's uh he's someone that has played he's, he's been playing for a while now you know mm-hmm. he knows he knows his body and he knows what works for him um, he's yeah like that has has things figured out in that way you know and so um yeah he you know he does what works for him um and mike is as you know, you know someone that's pretty smart yeah about things you know in, in a unique way and 
Um, and so, yeah, no, he's, you know, he prepares differently. I'm sure if you ask everyone on the team, everyone's going to tell you different things they do to prepare for yeah. the game, how they eat and all that. You know, it's, um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, it's different for everyone. I've had, um, and I'm not going to say the name, but one of my teammates in Philly that would always drink, um, like half of the Coke, like the, wow. the, before, before we go out to play. Um, no way. <laughs> it's, a that, yeah. it's a ritual that he's done his whole life, um, and goes out and was probably could run forever. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, everyone is different. Everyone's yeah, different. for sure. Um, so I have three more questions and I'll let you go. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for your time again. I've always, always appreciate you. Um, so what was it like to have Mike as a uh, captain? So like, of course, I've, I've known him since his union days. So like he, so like he wasn't really a captain with the union, but like as, as like he's been on the other teams, he'd be, he's developed like a great leadership role and stuff. So yeah. what was it like to have him as a captain last year? Yeah, no, I mean, he's a, uh... Mike is a guy that when you, when you talk to, you know, he, he shows a different perspective of life. Um, and he, um, he keeps things light, which is, which is what you need in, in a leader, you know, when things get rough and when things get tough, um, he's able to release that pressure, you know, he has a good sense of humor, um, and just have just, you know, a good guy to talk to, um, overall, um, because, you know, he and I had a lot of good conversations and for the, for the young kids on the team, he was, he was a good role model for them. Um, and, I, I don't know. You can ask everyone on the team, and everyone is going to have really good things to say about him. You know, just as a friend and, and as a leader, because he, you know, he always does what he needs to do, and and helps everyone around him, and and that's what you need in a leader. Um, and so it, it was good, um, and it, it was like it was a good locker room last year, um, and partly because <clears throat> excuse me, because of him, um, and because of people like him. And it does it does help because uh, I remember the first time I actually met him was I've I'd had I've I'd had a lot about him in Philly and then I had never met the guy and I met him when we were doing our physicals last year and he and I stood there and talked for you know like well over thirty minutes mm-hmm. um, and we didn't even know each other <laughs> and so um, over over time you know over time we, we our relationship became stronger and closer and and he's someone that I I, I look up to a lot and I still really admire. That's cool. That's like really uh, awesome to hear, and I'm sure he'll be uh, uh, really happy to hear that too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so this one's a fun question. Uh, I've been doing a poll since I've been doing my sports talks. So I've been only asking uh, the people that have lived in Philly or played in Philly. So I don't know if you if you ate a lot of cheesesteaks when you were here, mm-hmm. uh, but what is your what was your favorite cheesesteak spot in uh, Philly? Huh, this is probably remember. going to be uh, an unpopular opinion, but um, James on um, on four, I think it's on Fourth and South. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one and Ish Ish Kabibbles have been top two since I've been doing the uh, yeah. polls, and I've been the only one that has said Tony Luke's, but everyone's yeah. been uh, getting on me yeah. with uh, Tony Luke's. Yeah, James. Uh, I mean, I I went to James a few times, um, and that's because I live on Levington Spruce. Yeah. So you know, south south, you know, it's not that far from from Spruce Street, and so um, I'd go down there, um, and most of the time I did all, you know most of my grocery shopping. The Whole Foods on Ninth and South, and so mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just walked down and, and grabbed. I, I I just found it. It was good, and it wasn't always overcrowded. Um, and so I, I found that to be the, you know, the best place in Philly to get. <laughs> cool. In my, most people would, would agree or disagree, but. Uh, yeah, no, like that's actually been the top one. That and Ish, Ish Kabibbles, I forget which street they said. I think it's close to South Street, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it's like kind of like a corner store, too, because like you could go and buy stuff in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know, but oh, that's good. I mean, Philly has a lot of. Philly as a city itself has just a ton of good restaurants. Like yeah, everywhere, a ton everywhere, of food. You, everywhere you go in the city, it's there's good food. It's, yeah, you can't really go wrong with. And that's the one thing I like about it. I live in Washington Square, um, right on Levington Spruce, and around me was just you know, tons and tons of restaurants, really good places to eat. Um, so yeah, it's uh, definitely James. 
Okay, cool. Awesome. Yes. So I think you put that over the leaderboard with, with that one because it was like really, really close between that and Ish and Ish Kabibbles. Okay. Um, so, so, so my last question, I say this for last because I'm really excited and very supportive of, of your foundation. So you just started the Joshua Yarrow Foundation. So tell everyone about that and how you uh, began to start that. Yeah. So um, I mean, um, as, as you most people know, uh, I'm from Ghana, and when I was back home, you know, some some most kids will struggle to provide, you know, just like basic basic school supplies, and there's still the infrastructure for schools is still not up to where it needs to be, and so the the goal of the Joshua Foundation um, is to assist those kids that cannot afford for those basic needs. And, as, and assist um, places that do not have infrastructure. For example, there are places where kids still sit under trees to learn. And so the goal of the foundation is to start out by providing the basic needs and supplies for kids to be able to learn. And then in the long run, be able to build those infrastructures, which is, you know, classrooms, uh, libraries, and all that stuff to help kids um, grow and to help kids go to environments where they'll be comfortable getting an education and so the whole purpose is to, you know, to re revitalize the Ghanaian educational system um, and to, to help, as a result, help build the next generation of future leaders for the country. Okay. Yeah, no, it sounds like it's going to be really good. And then, of course, if you, if you want me to share anything on that, please, please do. I'll share it on my uh, stories and also on Facebook, too. Yeah, definitely. You're doing some really good things that I'm really – Happy to see this going, and I feel like it's going to be a really, really good, good thing over there. No, no, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I've started. I've worked on it for three years now, and you know, everything has come together to finally launch it and yeah, um, start doing some good stuff with it. And so, I'm really looking forward to it. And and yeah, if everyone that's listening, um, please contact me if you, if you have any, if you want to get involved in any way, um, because you know, you can always use the help and. I'm really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Cool, perfect. All right. Um, so I saw that there's been a couple of listeners that have been uh, watching yeah. this with us. So thank you, Tilo. Uh, thank you, Shane, uh, for for viewing this, and also Steve Mech, who uh, who works on the sidelines at the Union State. But I know I know he was really looking forward to listening to this interview. So thank you, Steve, so much for listening as well. And uh, Josh, of course, I always. Uh, keep in touch with you and all uh you're doing great great things i know i'm gonna be supporting the foundation too so of course yeah. uh whatever you need just let me know definitely oh and also uh tilo thank you <laughs> all right thank you tilo all right, all right I'll, josh I'll, I'll, I'll thank you man all right thank you very much everyone all right catch up soon all right bye josh all right, bye all right so that was uh josh yarrow who was my first uh soccer interview i was really happy to have him on he's such a great guy um i've known him since i was working the union sidelines since uh well 2015 i first started with that and then josh got drafted by the union in 2016 second overall pick in the first round so got to know him a little bit plus i got to visit uh michael lahoo i still do uh, public relations stuff for um so i got to see josh last year and he seems like he's doing really well. He's playing every day, which is what a young guy's got to do. Uh, so it seems like he's doing really well there. Um, so, again, this is soccer week. So I'm going to have a couple more guests. So I'm going to have Josh's teammate on. Um, his name's Blake Smith. I met him when Mike played for Miami FC, FC Cincinnati. So uh, I know – Blake a little bit so we'll have him on I believe Wednesday it is I think we're doing one o'clock because um they're still in Texas so I'm just accommodating them so we're not gonna do the show at 12 it's gonna be at uh one o'clock so thank you everybody so much for uh tuning in I'll see you on Wednesday thank you